welcome to Live in the Solution. I'm your astrologer and tarot card reader Mary Trimble here with your readings for September the 9th through September the what? Let me see. Through September the 15th. Um, guys, I just want to say thank you so much for all the wonderful sentiments and for your patience and and your support and loyalty um, during this really difficult time. Um, as most of you know, my brother passed away last week, so I just needed some time, uh, you know, alone in solitude to kind of contemplate my feelings around that. So I really, really appreciate you. And these readings are dedicated to my brother, Michael. I know he would have said, get on with it, you know. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, it doesn't mean I don't get sad at times, but the show must go on. And um, anyway, uh, these readings are for the collective, guys. Um, so take what resonates and leave the rest. If you're new, welcome. I really hope you enjoy these readings and that you come back. Um, and... Uh, if you would like a personal, more tailored reading, you may click on this link here or go to my website. Um, and all the links for everything uh, is in the show more section below, you know, the description box. Uh, I will have uh, links to the other videos in there because this is for your sun, moon and rising. So check out the other videos. And, um, and I also have a Facebook uh, group that's closed um, and the link to that will be there. And I, every other week I do a live uh, feed just for that group. And, um, and we talk, we, you know, we, uh, I look at the aspects and how usually it's a full moon and a new moon. That's how I do it every two weeks. And we look at your sign and how you will be um, impacted by that celestial sky at the time. And I also do, you know, answer questions with the tarot so that we have fun in that in that uh, group. So, you know, join the group, um, follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, and please like, share and comment on my videos. I'd really appreciate that. Now these readings, this reading comes at my videos, sorry, come in three sections. The intro, which is this, then the astrological, um, reading and then the tarot and there are skip times for each section um, in the show more section below so you'll be able to skip especially if you're uh, you know checking out your sun moon and rising and another way to support this uh, this channel is through patreon and I really want to thank my patrons I really appreciate you. Thank you for believing in me and supporting me. And I especially want to thank um, Hilary Smith has been so generous and so kind during this time. And Joe Lamar, he's also been extremely generous and kind and checking in on me. And, and Beth, Beth, thank you so much. Um, Beth has been extremely generous and caring and kind. So I, everyone's been very kind. I'm very, very fortunate uh, to have such wonderful, wonderful and incredible people in my life, and I'm, I'm really thankful for that uh, from the bottom of my heart. So, without further ado, let's go to the uh, astrology section, shall we? Hello and welcome to the astrological portion of your reading for the week of September the 9th through the 15th. And what a dynamic celestial sky we have this week. It is incredible. Um, at the beginning of the week, we start off with a stellium of planets in Virgo. Virgo is an earth sign. It's a mutable sign, which means it's kind of flexible and, you know, it, it sways. It moves here and moves there. Um, and uh, there are four planets in Virgo at the beginning of the week. By the end of the week, two of those planets will move into Libra. Um, so that will be Mercury and Venus. So they move from this very kind of he heavy, 
grounded earth sign into a very light intellectual air sign. But more about that later, um, because the big news this week is the full moon in Pisces. On the 13th or 14th of September, which is the Friday or Saturday, depending on where you are on the planet. Now, the full moon, as most of you know, is when the sun is opposite the moon. In fact, it is the sun that is reflecting on the moon that gives the moon the light. The moon doesn't have any light of its own per se. It's the, it just reflects the moon, uh, the light from the sun. So a full moon is the completion of the lunar cycle. So it is the culmination of the cycle. Um, it's a time, it's the crescendo, if you will. It's a, it rules our emotions. So we're very affected uh, by the moon and it's very close to the earth. Um, it's the closest planet to the earth. So we definitely feel that. And it's a very fast moving planet. That's why they, they say, you know, Cancerians are ruled by the moon, right? Um, and that, you know, they call them moody because the moon, you know, moves very fast, faster than any other planet. So they go through moods quickly. Um, now, this is a, the full moon is a really good time to let go, to um, sloth off your emotions, to uh, forgive, forgive yourself, forgive others, to let go um, of something that needs to go, to allow that to move away, to just let it go. Um, sometimes it's good to look at what we started at the new moon and see how far we've come. Has it has it completed uh, whatever we planned or started at the first moon at the new moon? I mean, um, can come to a culmination uh, at the full moon. Now, on Friday, the thirteenth. Be this is before the uh, full moon in Pisces. And I just want to mention, right, so the moon is in Pisces and the sun is in Virgo. Um, Virgo, as I said before, is this grounding, mutable energy. And Pisces is a mutable energy. Also, it's watery. It's the most sensitive of all signs. It's the oldest sign in the zodiac. It is... Uh, a completion of the zodiac, if you will. So, so where the uh, where uh, Virgo is very practical and grounding and analytical and you know problem solving, um, Pisces is kind of very ethereal. There's a connection uh, with the ethereal realm. It's like having one foot in the ethereal realm and one foot on the ground, right? Um, and it's Pisces is ruled by Neptune, and Neptune is actually next to this moon at the time. So um, the thing about Neptune is it's, it's this is a really spiritual, and um, what do I want to say? Psychic, uh, intuitive, full moon. This is when we tap into our intuition, um, you know, it's where logic and intuition come into play. It's almost like the head and the heart come together and you can uh, really make intelligent decisions. It's really a wonderful time for meditation, for connecting with the higher realm. Not only that, okay, so I'm getting, I'm getting a little uh, ahead of myself here. So uh, Mercury is, so on Friday before uh, Mercury and Venus move into uh, Libra, they are together in Virgo, what we call conjunct, and their energies are melding, right? And they are, you know, Venus is about relationships and Mercury is about, uh, Mercury is about uh, conversation. It's about communication. This is a communicating full moon. It is an intuitive form. It's so powerful. This is really important. This is an incredible time. To it's almost like epiphanies can happen during this time because the sun is also uh, on that same day on Friday, actually at 3.33 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, the sun trines Pluto. Now, 333 
means uh, the angels and the uh, ascended masters are surrounding you, right? And this is so <laughs> what's happening. The sun, the creator, right? Godlike. Um, and you've got Pluto from the underworld, but really, um, you know, a power, it's a power dynamic. This is strong and powerful. And you can, it's in a beautiful, the, a trine is a beautiful relationship. So this is a wonderful opportunity to uh, be empowered, to look at your own personal power, to go within, to seek um, guidance from the ethereal realm, from, your, from spirit, from the angels, um, to connect with them. I mean, this is just, uh, it's, it's so incredible. Now, when the uh, new, when this full moon happens, right, we have all of this, what I like to call a cosmic soup happening. We have this, uh, what we call a T-square in uh, astrology. And, and this means that there is, it's like a very kind of uh, wide triangle, if you will, from the full moon to... Jupiter. Now, Jupiter is about expansion. It's about, you know, uh, spirituality. It's about the higher realms. It's higher learning, right? Um, and and it's in a contentious relationship with the moon and the sun at the same time. Um, now, squares are kind of motivators, right? They're contentious, but there's a breaking point right, where they break apart, and then something wonderful comes out of it. So these are, squares are motivators. They're not really, uh, they're not, they're not a bad uh, aspect. They are, as I said before, motivators. So this is a really, it's, okay, so I'm, I'm getting, I get really excited. This is a really wonderful opportunity to connect with spirit to to go within to look at what has empowered you in the past and what you need to do going forward this is this is kind of epiphanies where um you could be doing something and say wow you know what this isn't working for me anymore i'm it's almost like there's major life-changing decisions for a lot of people and people will make it uh, will make those life-changing decisions. It's about being empowered. It's about doing what's right for you, what's right for everyone, because what's right for you is right for everyone. Now, you must be careful not to let the ego get in. So it's really important to meditate. It's really important to hear. You know, prayer is talking to God. Meditation is listening. So all you have to do is to make sure that your pride and ego don't get in the way and that you humbly um, go within and search uh, for what's right for you. I mean, this is just such a powerful full moon. It's exciting. Now, Venus, um, Mercury moves into Libra about 3.15 in the afternoon and I also want to mention that what's interesting at this full moon is Mercury rules uh, Virgo. And so that's together in the sign with the sun. So this is a very, what's interesting is, right, the ruler of Virgo is um, in is next to the sun and the ruler of Pisces is next to the moon. This makes it even more powerful and stronger. And we will look, you know, Ver, uh, Pisces and Neptune is about creativity on the higher scale, right? It's creativity, it's illusion, it's like tapping into the ethereal realm. And on, on the downside, it can be delusion, it can be, it can uh, be foggy, it can take you in daydreams, and you, and it's very difficult to get focus sometimes. Like, I've had to pull myself together, <laughs> um, you know, when, when Neptune is at play, it's, you, you know, you can have a lifetime in a couple of hours, and it's important not to kind of 
Um, you can get melancholy at this time and you can uh, get a little sad and, and perhaps, uh, you know, especially when the squares are happening, you can get a little fearful. But you have Mars opposite uh, Neptune too. So that kind of gives you Mars and the Sun, it gives you that kind of um, energy that you want to get up and you want to do something. Um, and you you want, but what's interesting is Pisces is relaxed and chill and contemplate and be creative. And, you know, Mars and the Sun is like action and creativity and excitement and, you know, uh, uh, fast energy. So you have this push-pull. It's important to remain balanced during this time. And what is lovely is that Venus um, moves into its home sign of Libra, right? A bit later on that day, after Mercury moves into Libra. And Mercury is about, you know, balance. Uh, Mercury is about the intellect, thought process and communication. And Libra is about balance and diplomacy. And, and so, you know, your communications become a lot more kind of calmer and, uh, and balanced and, and um, harmonious. And Venus moves into Libra, and that's Venus's home sign. She's, she's very refined in Libra. She's intellectual. She likes to express herself through poetry and music and art. So we will feel that wonderful expression of poetry and art and music will get that um, incredible appreciation for that. And actually, that's a really great way to channel that energy. And if you're a writer or you're into the visual arts, this is perfect energy for you to move forward. Um, but all in all, this really powerful full moon, prepare for it, do a full moon ritual, you know, charge your, your crystals. Um, do a ritual, do meditate during it. It's this is a I'm going to go out and I will meditate in in the outdoors under this moon. I will moon bathe <laughs> and I will um, meditate under this full moon because we are going to make such amazing connections during this time. Thank you guys. Let's go to your tarot reading, shall we? Hello Libra and welcome to the tarot card section of your reading for September the 9th through September the 15th. I have been shuffling a little too long off screen for you and I did the intention but one more time just for posterity. Okay Libra, oh it's coming up to your birthday season. You are going to Feel that energy of Venus coming home to you and Mercury moving into your sign. It's exciting for you guys. Okay. Three cards for Libra. What wonderful gifts, guidance, blessings and helpful information can you give Libra to, for this next week to get through the week? Wonderful gifts, guidance, blessings and helpful information. For Libra, three cards, please, for Libra. Wonderful. Go, oh, there's one. Oh, two more cards for Libra, please. Oh, I thought that was coming out, but it didn't. Oh, two more cards for Libra, please. Two more cards for Libra. Oh, there's another one. One more card. Oh. You got two more cards. Oh, that's interesting. I kept seeing that. Okay, that's first. There's definitely crossover here, Libra. So check out your sun, moon, and rising. If you know, if you don't know your sun, moon, and rising, there are loads of websites with free natal charts if you know the time that you were born. Cafe Astrology and something else. What else is it? I forget. Astro something, astro.com, something like that. Okay, so um, please, these are clarifying cards for Libra. Please um, clarify. Wonderful gifts, blessings and guidance and helpful information. Can you give Libra? Oh, through these clarifying cards. And there you go. 
please clarify. Oh, they're coming up fast and furious now. And please clarify. There it is. Oh. Let's look at your card, shall we? Okay, the first card out is the Three of Pentacles. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then you have the Queen of Cups. Then you have the Eight of Swords, clarified by the Tower. Then you have the Lover's card, right next to the Fifth, Five, sorry, Fifth, the Five of Pentacles. And uh, clarifying those two cards is the Emperor. Okay, now the first card out for you, let me put this down, is the Three of Pentacles. The Three of Pentacles, three I always think of as um, Jupiter, it's expansion, right? It's um, more, it's, it's creating more. And, and I say creating because this is someone who's, you know, really in their craft and they've done this wonderful work um, and they're admiring it. And this, I always think of this too as becoming the master. And if you are a master already, you can always be a master teacher, right? It's all, it's putting the time, effort and energy into your craft that, you know, what it deserves, right? really putting the time and effort into it, um, learning as you go along. I'm really getting that this is very the energy for this week astrologically. It's about looking at the past and learning from it. So this is every mistake that you've ever made, learn from. Um, and, and perfect your craft, perfect you, perfect you. It's really interesting that I got that. Now, the next card, the, the card that's clarifying the Three of uh, Pentacles is the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups is all about, well, she kind of helps everyone. She's this wonderful, she loves, she loves luxury too. She loves to be surrounded by luxury, but she loves, she's, she's in service to her subjects and she will do anything for them in terms of, you know, helping them. So when this, the Queen of Cups comes in, she, sometimes she, she helps people to hit the detriment of herself. So this is asking you to, yes, it's okay to help people and it's okay to be emotionally there for them, but you must take care of yourself. So perhaps um, this is about overworking, uh, working too hard, Libra. You have to kind of find a balance is what I'm getting. Get, get, I'm really getting that. And you're all about balance. Oh, my dog's dreaming. Can you hear him? <laughs> He's running through meadows, chasing rabbits. <laughs> um, so <laughs> it's really going at Um, So this really is, you know, he could sleep through my voice, obviously. Um, this really is reminding you to uh, take care of yourself now. The next card up for you is the um, Eight of Swords. <laughs> Sparky, wake up. It's <laughs> making so much noise. He's still, still at it. Okay, so the Eight of Swords. The Eight of Swords is, a, is an illusion. It's you, uh, it's imprisoning yourself. It's believing that you are, it's thinking you're stuck, right? Um, she has a blindfold on and she's refusing to see the situation. 
the truth in the situation. But by ignoring what's going on, it's kind of going to blow up in your face, Libra. I hate to say this, but you've got the Tower card here. The Tower card represents Uranus, and there is some uh, Uranian energy here, surprises, um, can come into play. So look, this is also, you know, this this full moon is a transformation, a transformational moon. And this is, the, you know, change is happening. There's definitely um, change happening. And this is important to embrace this change, to understand that change is happening for a reason and to not feel so uh, victimized by it because she is, she doesn't believe that there's any way out. She believes that, the, you know, she's, she's chained up forever that you know the jailer locked her away and threw away the key um but this is really all in your head we are release the chains don't be controlled by your mind by your brain um it's really important to discipline yourself and to accept this change look the tower doesn't feel good i'm not going to lie to you it's not you know I've had the tower a million times, you know, it's come crashing down in my face quite a few times. Um, this is, this is interesting because this tower has two people involved in it, a male and a female. Um, this could be the end of a relationship. Whatever it is, something is being removed and it is a situation so either a person is being removed, perhaps you're losing a job, perhaps you're changing, you know, you've lost an apartment. Um, but out of the tower, right, rises, you know, the phoenix rises from the ashes. The tower comes in when something needs to go. Um, and perhaps you know what it is and you haven't removed it. And, and so it's going to be removed in a spectacular way. <laughs> um, so it's really look embrace any change that comes in this week look at the lessons from the past learn from them don't repeat the past we all need to know that we need to make a judgment on what we've done in our past how this is affecting us now and how will it affect affect us in the future so we need to learn from past experiences um now the next card in is the lovers card right this is passionate this is you know this is mars and venus right this is a decision though i'm, I'm i think because this i feel that you look you've got the five of pentacles so you're feeling deprived of love you're feeling deprived there's no doubt in my mind. And maybe that is where this is going. This needs to go. You need to release it. And this is the full moon. It's perfect to release it, you know. Um, stop taking care of people. And you're not stuck. You can get out of this. You can release it. If you don't release it, it's going to be ripped away from you anyway. That's what the, you know, the tower is all about. Just it going. So you are definitely feeling deprived of love because the five of pentacles is deprivation. And right next to the lover's card, you're obviously deprived of love. And, and it's about looking at your glass half full. So just because you're feeling deprived of love from one area, right, Libra, doesn't mean that you are deprived or you will be deprived of love forever. That's not the case. This is, you know... Uh, it's about looking, coming from the deprivation of love into the abundance of love is really about being grateful for whomever is giving you love. Like if it's a child, a niece, nephew, daughter, son, grandson, granddaughter, what, what, you know, friends, children, you know, I get so much joy from my friends, children. Oh my God, I love them. You know, they brighten my day. It's great. So, you know, look, look, go where it's warm. That's what I'm getting. And, and 
clarifying this is the emperor. So you really kind of need to structure. This is about getting rid of what doesn't work for you. So you must, don't be in this energy. Look, sometimes people don't deserve our love. And we need to do a searching inventory on ourselves. And, you know, look, when I, 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 I tell my clients sometimes to do a pros and cons list, what was the, what was the pros and write them down, you know, before you do it, ask for the, you know, the courage to write the truth down, write down the pros and the cons and what comes out on top, you know, drop it like a hot potato, move on. There's much more out there for you. This is about clearing out what doesn't work. And if you're feeling deprived of love in this relationship, then move on. It's not working. You shouldn't have to fight for your love. You shouldn't have to feel deprived. You know, it's not, it's not that much work. I, I just thought about that, um, that person who wrote that book. What was it? he's just not that into you or they're just not that into you, into you, you know, male or female. You have to just go where it's warm. Don't keep going back to the same old thing because it's pain. It needs to go. That's it. It needs to go. Release it. And the, and the full moon is a perfect energy to release it and just... Libra, I'm sorry about that. The format, the card filled up. Um, the SD card, so I had to change it. So, thank you for tuning in. Please don't forget to like this video, share it on your social media, um, with friends, family, um, any neighbors. Please help me grow this channel. And if you, um, oh, and comment. I live for comments and feedback. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Mwah. I love you all, and I'll see you next week.